Over the past few years, GMK Tech have released case updates to their Ryzen Mini PCs. In this video, we'll say hello to the brand new one that debuts with the M7 and M7 Pro. We got this in exchange for a video review, no cash has been exchanged, and all thoughts and opinions are our own. Saying that, this is more of a mini review of the M7 series. Let's have a quick look at the specs. Here's the M7, and the M7 Pro. Not much difference outside the boost on the GPU and the CPU. So this one's the M7 Pro, and straight away we can see it's a bit of a locker. Through the semi-transparent lid we can see a large case fan, which is very welcome, as it should drive down those noise levels. It's come pre-installed with a full version of Windows 11 Pro, and it comes with a clean install, without any virus or malware. Always use protection. We could easily update Windows and the drivers to the latest versions, and being 8 core 16 thread computers, they're more than capable of running Windows tasks. Be it Office, online shopping, a digital audio workstation, film production, or even trying to find a Sega Arcade. Where is it? Speed tests show that the SSD included is a PCI 3 before, which is pretty fast, but we would prefer it at PCI 4. Geekbench gives us some of the best numbers we see in stock from any of the Zen 3 Plus mini PCs that we tested. And the same is true for TimeSpy. It's still using the Radeon 680M integrated GPU, which can certainly play some games, but you may need to lower graphic settings for the more demanding titles. It's Rocket League at 1080p high. Fortnite, 1080p high. And once human, 1080p low. This is a life form that has been infected with stardust. It's called the Deviant. Our world has been overrun with Deviants ever since. You're probably wondering, who are you? Well, I'm Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and we've been reviewing mini PCs and emulation bits for the past four years now. Flipping heck! We'll be teaming up with GMK Tech, and we'll be hosting a mini PC giveaway. Giveaway! We'll be handing two lucky people one of these mini PCs. Each. So make sure you're subscribed, not to miss out. Back to the video. Subscribble. As mentioned in the intro, there have been a few iterations of case design, each with improvements from the last. The first ones are the smallest, and they house the Ryzen CPUs that ran up to the GMK Tech K4. There's one fan at the bottom that provides the cooling, and they are very easy to open up. Here we can see the memory and storage, but the main issue of this design was the top area had absolutely no way of letting out heat. It was fine for applications on light gaming, but it was thermal throttle if you were in heavier games for longer sessions. There have been people who 3D printed their own lid and fan mount to cool this area down, but let's see how they sorted this issue with the next case. So this one's been used since the start of 2024. It's slightly larger and much smarter design, gives it more space for heat to dissipate. Not only do both sides, the back and bottom have air holes, but the top does too. If we take a look at the small slit in between the lid and the case, not here on the front, but on the sides, we can see them. There they are. In and out. Much like the first case design, we can easily take off the top by simply giving it a pull. So this model has a small fan that supplies cooling to the insides of the case, so now both top and bottom areas are adequately cooled. To get to memory and storage, we need to remove four screws, and like that, we're in. Attached to the lid, we have a 40mm fan, but due to its small size, it creates a high pitch whine when it's maxed out. Saying that, the insides are cleaned up significantly, and we even have an extra NVMe slot for storage. One thing to note is the inner NVMe will have to go in without a heatsink, as there's no room due to the fan. But as this fan is blowing directly onto the memory and storage, we should be fine. And here is the new revision. This first being used for the M7 and M7 Pro, and we have no doubts they'll roll this out for other products in the Ryzen line. We can see one of the main priorities is to improve cooling, and it's made evident with the gaps going all around the case. 
Main staples of GMK Tech, like the use of colours, is still present, but this time with new ports, this should keep them competitive in the market. Whoops. I forgot to mention that the rubber feet are the same size as the second series. To open the case, we need to rotate the lid. Just keep rotating, and we're already off, aren't we? Yeah. Here's the case fan, and as mentioned, this is much larger than before, so even with a slower rotation, you should be able to push more air and be quieter. Getting into the case still requires a screwdriver, and this time the screws are a little larger, leaving us with less chance of stripping the threads. The fan wire has been given a bit more protection, and the main board has been redesigned to incorporate the size of the fan. Even though we've been given a PCI 3 before, both of the slots support PCI Gen 4 and the DDR5 included runs at the highest official supported speeds of 400 mits, and it's good to see that the VRM is going to be actively cooled on the board. Let's move on to the noise levels. The M6 in the Grid Auto Sport benchmarks, in both 45 and 65 watt modes, gives around 48 decibels of noise, and it sounds like this. But the K5 at 65 watts could be much louder. But if we move on to the M7 Pro, with a new case design at the default 54 watts TDP, it is much quieter. And at idle, you don't even know it's on. As we upgraded our Wi-Fi router, we decided to retest each of our systems for signal strength. And while there was a nice jump in signal and speed from the first to second case, we saw a huge step back when we tried the GMK Tech M7 Pro. Signal slumped to 72%, and speeds were at well below 100 megabits. As it used the same Intel Wi-Fi chip from the K5, we decided to check if the MediaTek RZ616 from the M6 would give it a boost. And indeed it did. We've already reported our findings to GMK Tech, but we'd like to hear from you. Which Wi-Fi chip do you prefer? Is there anything to this, or are we just simply talking BS? There's always the option of using the Joule 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN, or one of them USB Wi-Fi dongles. We've already spoke about 6ATM gaming, but with the addition of the Oculink port, it's perfectly possible to connect a full-size GPU to this mini-computer. Granted, you would need an Oculink dock and an extra power supply, transforming your once mini-computer into something from sci-fi. And that rhymed. And even though I'm content with the display port, they've added HDMI 2.1 for their new displays, allowing both higher resolutions and refresh rates. We can purchase these computers from either Amazon or directly from the website. Links are in the video description down below, and we can see the bare-bones version of the M7 is being currently sold for $299. You need to add your own memory, storage and OS, but if you don't like the hassle of that, the version with 16GB of RAM and 1512 storage is at $389. The M7 Pro is a bit more expensive with a slight boost on both the main processor and graphics, with a 32GB of memory and 1TB storage version going for $459. It's about time for the pros and the cons. Both the M7 and M7 Pro have a lot going for it. The new stylish case, quiet fan, and Oculink bring a high-value mini PC to the table. However, the NVMe could have been better, we need to rely on lower graphic options for 1080p gaming, and we want a better Wi-Fi chip. As for an alternative, if you don't need silence and hate the idea of Oculink, we still rate the slightly faster K6. It has a faster 780M GPU, but if you look around the website, sometimes you can find an absolute bargain. So yeah, the new design is great. And if you'd like a chance of winning one of these computers, please subscribe to our channel. We'll be hosting a live in the next few weeks with friends, Wicked Gamer and Retro Game Corps, and how to be a part of it will be announced via channel post. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! In their pants.